Have you ever heard of tacos de suadero? My God, they're like the beefiest, most delicious tacos in the entire world. And I'm gonna teach you how to make them. Welcome back to my kitchen. The next page in our taco manual takes us to Suadero. Now don't just click off if you don't know what Suadero is because you're going to want to know what Suadero is. It's one of the most delicious tacos that's made anywhere in Mexico and it's a beef taco. Now you know what carnitas are, right? I mean it's pork that's cooked in its own fat and you know how delicious that is. Well think of Suadero as the beef version of that. Now in the old days the butchers were trying to figure out things that they could do that would add value to some of the cuts that they just ground into hamburger meat. And so some of these touch cuts were very delicious, but they were also very tough. So they figured out that some of these muscles that you find sort of in this section of a cow stuff that always just got ground um, could be cooked slowly. Well, think about brisket and how long you have to cook brisket to get it tender. But there's a lot of other cuts. So this one, this huge thing here, is what they came up with. This is a cut that's called navel. You've probably never heard of it because I had it until I started doing all the suadero research. But this is the cut that most people point to as the original suadero cut. You won't find it in your, your uh, grocery store. So what will you find? Well, let's go to brisket. So I have brisket here. This is brisket from the part that they call the flat part of it. It's the thick part of the brisket. Um, I always choose that if I'm not going to do a whole brisket because it's fattier and a beefier flavored. So that's what I've chose. I've got a, chosen. I've got a couple pounds of that and I've got some chorizo that I'm going to talk about here in a minute. So how is it cooked? Let me show you the traditional way. This contraption is called a choricera, and the people that work with it are usually making what everybody in Mexico City that I know calls tacos de fritangas, or stuff that's all fried. Now, this is a home size version of it because in Mexico City, they're huge like this. But I wanted to show you what this is so that you could get an idea for how it's used. So what I have around the outside here is melted pork lard. This is fresh rendered pork lard, and that's our primary cooking medium. The heat is right under this domed part, which will be used later for browning the meat. Um, but I'm going to put in here uh, some water. I got a couple cups of water that will go in here that will regulate the temperature of the fat. Now that may seem kind of an odd thing to do to put water into fat, but remember we want this to be very low temperature so that it will completely tenderize this delicious brisket. Okay, next thing that we're going to do is to put a couple of teaspoons of salt in here. The two teaspoons will be enough to give some nice flavor to, to this. So I'm going to sprinkle those around here like this. It will dissolve as this long, slow cooking goes on. And then the pieces of meat, they should really be submerged in this cooking medium here. So get them in there. If they need to be cut up smaller, then you can do that um, pull them out and cut them smaller. Uh, but once you get the meat in here, I have one last thing to add to it. Now, usually when people are making suadero the, uh, as a 
commercial enterprise, they're not just doing suadero in this. They're also going to be doing the little tripitas, the little tripes, the, the low, small intestines usually of the, the pigs, but they'll also be doing pieces of uh, longanisa sausage. And that longanisa sausage will really flavor the fat that this is cooking in. This is all seeming really odd to you, I know, right now, because you can't imagine having this thing. But hold on, and I'm going to show you how you can actually do this really easily um, at home. But I wanted to show you what the real deal is, just like this. Now, we want there to be a little movement in the fat here. So like what I would call a very gentle simmer. And we're going to leave it here for about four hours or so to tenderize that meat that's in there. We may have to add a little bit more water from time to time to keep the level of the fat submerging the meat, but also to keep the, the fat at the right temperature. I've got this over about a medium low heat and that will usually be the right temperature. Okay, now let's go back to what do you do? Okay, so I showed you that big piece of that cut of meat called a navel and said, but you can do this with brisket. Also, I showed you the choricera, the classic way of doing it in Mexico. But I'm going to also show you that you can do this in a slow cooker. And that's probably what most of you are going to be choosing. So I have two cups of the uh, fat here, the, the pork fat, just two cups. And I'm going to put a couple of teaspoons of salt in there. And then I've got the chorizo that I'm going to put in as well. Just scoop that in and then disperse it. This is out of the casing, so I'm just dispersing it in that fat. And the cool thing is that where it takes about five cups or so of fat for me to do the choricera style, this one only takes two cups of fat. And now I'm going to just put all of this meat in here and then I'm going to nestle it. Um, if you've seen the versions of carnitas that I do, I do one in the oven, I do one with that slow cook sous vide style, and then I do one in the slow cooker. And to tell you the truth, the slow cooker is my favorite version of all of that. You just nestle these guys down in here and we're going to put the top on it and turn this guy on. I'm going to turn it. I've got it. Let's see here. I go to there and I've got it on high and this will cook for four hours. Same as what the Choriceta version of it would be. But no water in this one and just let it go. It's a closed uh, uh, container. So it's going to cook just fine all by itself. No fuss, no muss. I'll meet you back here in four hours. Okay, it has been about four hours now. Um, I can tell you that the smell here is just incredible because you get the beefiness, you get the fat. You, I mean, it's just like you want to eat. Your mouth is watering. So let's take a look and see what this is like here. Got a little steam there. But you don't really notice too much with uh, what, what we're seeing in here. It's not like bubbling away or anything like that. But this meat should now be really super tender, like almost fall apart tender, but we're going to cut it into smaller pieces and then brown it. Now, when you go to a lot of places, um, especially in Mexico City that's so famous for suadero, um, they will ask you, do you want it browned, dorado? Or do you just want it straight? It's delicious straight out of this. Of course, in the choricera that we've got working over here, it's got the same amount of time basically going, um, but you have to watch it more because you don't want it to just fry there. You want to kind of have it, keep it at about that little under 212 um, in temperature so that it's barely, barely cooking along and doing that very slow for this rather tough piece of meat. Okay, so um, since I like the dorado version of suadero, um, I'm going to cut this all up into uh, pieces that are a little bit less 
then about half an inch. You'll notice as I'm cutting it here that it's it falls apart a little bit. So don't worry about that part of it. Um, it's not going to be sort of perfect looking little cubes. So I've got to get through all of this. Okay, we've got all of this chopped up, sort of broken up here. I'm going to take a little of the fat that we cooked this in. By the way, you could strain this fat and you can store it to use to make really delicious beans. You could also use it to make more suadero. But I'm going to take some of those. There's a little bit of liquid in there and I went pretty deep in there. All that liquid is gone now, but we need just enough of it to heavily coat the bottom of that. So I'm going to put all the meat in here. Now, so if you're a, like a nerd like me and you actually own one of these choriceros over here, um, let me just show you how you would do this if you want to give your friends and family that full, full experience. Um, I'm choosing the most tender piece over here, uh, taking it out of the fat, and I'm going to cut that up. I'm not going to do all of it for you. I'm just going to show you how it would be done. Or if you want to apprentice for being a street vendor, um, then this is what you would have to learn how to do. I'm going to take some of the, the fat here and put that up on the top of the dome there. And then we'll take the piece of the broken up piece there and then just let it brown up there because remember your fire is right under the under this part of it so you would do that i'm going to come over here to this brisket and start just turning it around you can see just how beautifully browned it is that crunch that browned crunch is my favorite part of suadero and this is one of my favorite cuts of meat, even though it's probably not what the suadero is going to be made from when you have it in Mexico City. But it works just beautifully for this, and it's super accessible to you. This stuff over here, you'll start to see it browning up a little bit as I can turn these guys over here. Now, the, the guys that um, make suadero tacos using a choricera like this, we would take the tortillas, the cold tortillas, dip them in a little bit of the fat, and then their domes are much bigger because this is a tiny little choricera, and they would just heat the tortillas up on that. I've got some warm tortillas because we're just about ready here. I don't like to brown this too much. I don't want to dry it out or anything like that. So I'm going to sort of build the taco for you here. Get rid of those guys back there. And my tortillas are already warm here. Let me take a look at these guys and see what we think. Yeah, this is just exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm turning the heat off. And I'm gonna put a couple of tortillas down here and we'll build these beautiful suadero tacos for you. Okay, so meat on here, nice crispy meat. Oh, beautiful, and it smells so good too. And now for this one, I like to have a bold salsa. Um, so I've got the one that's made out of arbol and roasted tomatillo, but you could use any kind of salsa or hot sauce to put on here. But I'm going to spoon some of that over the meat. I think this taco is not completed unless you put onions and cilantro on it. And of course, you have to squeeze lime on this one because you've got all this rich and wonderfully fatty meat here. Okay, so 
because I have suffered through the smell of this for so long, I'm just going to dig right in. <laughs> 